Chapter 10.5, Day 1, Rotation of Conics. We're going to rotate the coordinate axes to eliminate the xy term in equations of conics. So that's what we're going to focus on here, the first one. Uh, in the preceding section, we classified conics whose rotations were written in the general form ax squared plus cy squared plus cx plus ey plus f equals 0. The graph of such conics have axes that are parallel to one of the coordinate axes. Conics whose axes are rotated, so they are not parallel to either the x-axis or y-axis, have general equations that contain an xy term. So this is an equation in an xy plane. In order to eliminate this xy term, we're going to use a procedure called rotation of the axes. The objective is to rotate the x and y axes until they are parallel to the axis of the conic. The rotated axes are denoted as the x prime axis and y prime axis, as shown in the figure on the right. After the rotation, the equation of the conic in the xy plane will have this form. So it's a prime x prime squared plus c prime y prime squared plus d prime x prime plus e prime y prime plus f prime equals zero. And that's the equation in the x prime y prime plane. This equation has no x prime y prime term, so notice that it disappears. Uh, this here, that is no longer there. So you can obtain a standard form by completing the square. The theorem below identifies how much to rotate the axes to eliminate the xy term and also the equations for determining the new coefficients of a prime, c prime, d prime, e prime, and f prime. So here is how we rotate the axes to eliminate an xy term. The general second degree equation we noted above, ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero where b is not 0, it can be rewritten as a prime x prime squared plus c prime y prime squared plus d prime x prime plus e prime times y prime plus f prime equals 0. By rotating the coordinate axes through an angle theta, where cotangent of 2 theta equals a minus c over b. So we would take a minus c over b. The equations the coefficients of the new equation are obtained by making the substitutions. So we're going to solve for x, and to do that we plug in x equals x prime cosine theta, so whatever theta we get after plugging this in, minus y prime sine of theta. Then to get the y value, it's y equals x prime sine of theta plus y prime cosine of theta. So with x, um, it's going to be the cosine first, and then it's negative. With the y, we use the sine first, and then we're going to have positive. Now, something to note is that remember that the substitutions x equals this here and y equals here should eliminate the x prime y prime term in the rotated system. So use this as a check for your work. So we'll see that if you find that at the end that you're simplifying that you still have an x prime y prime term, then you know you made a mistake somewhere and then you'll go back and check. So we'll, we'll talk about that uh, when we do an example. So let's try this first example, rotation of axes for a hyperbola. Rotate the axes to eliminate the xy term in the equation xy minus 1 equals 0. Then we're going to write the equation in standard form and sketch its graph. So number one, uh, remember over here, we need to find theta. And so cotangent of theta equals a minus c over b. So let's do that just to kind of write it. So cotangent of 2 theta equals a minus c over b. So in this case, there is no a. a equals 0. This is b b is 1, and c is also this 0. So just again to take a look at it, uh, a is with the x squared term, the xy is the b term, and then the c is the y squared uh, coefficient. So therefore, looking at this, we know we have 0 minus 0 over 1, so we have cotangent of theta equals 0, cotangent of 2 theta equals 0. Sorry, it's cotangent of 2 theta equals 0. So when is that true? When is cotangent of theta equal 0 over 1? Well, that is going to be here, at because that's the x over the y. So x is 0, y is positive 1. So therefore, that is at pi over 2. So now we have 2 theta equals pi over 2. Then to solve for theta, you're going to divide by 2, or multiply by half, however you want to see. Look at that. And so theta equals pi over 4. So this here, this pi over 4, tells us how much we are rotating the axes to eliminate the xy term. So that is what we found, that theta. And so what's going to happen is we're going to rotate that x value here, the x-axis, pi over 4, 
this way, and then our y-axis will also rotate, just to kind of understand what we're doing here. So that's the x prime, and this is now the y prime. So now we're going to use the equation over here for our x value and our y value. So let's do that. So for the x value, again, that's x prime cosine theta minus y prime sine of theta. So we're going to plug in the theta pi over 4. So this is x prime cosine of pi over 4 minus y prime sine of pi over 4. Then pi over 4, we know is, we're going to leave it as 1 over root 2 just to make it a little simplified. We remember that as root 2 over 2, but for now we're going to leave it as the 1 over root 2. Then we have minus y prime of the same thing, 1 over root 2. And then if we simplify this, so this ends up being x prime minus y prime over square root of 2. That is our x value there. Now let's do y, so the same substitution. So it's x prime sine of theta plus y prime of cosine of theta. So let's plug it all in. x prime sine of theta is pi over 4. So I'll just go ahead and plug it in for now just to kind of get us used to writing it. And then let's do the substitution. Pi over 4 we know is 1 over root 2. And then y prime of cosine of pi over 4 is also 1 over root 2. So our y simplifies to x prime plus y prime over square root of 2. So now we have our x and our y, and so we want to substitute that into the original equation. So substitute an original equation. So we're going to substitute it into our x times y minus 1 equals 0. So x is x prime minus y prime over root 2 times the y value here, which is x prime plus y prime over square root of 2. And then the rest of the equation is minus 1 equals 0. So again, I just plugged in the x here and the y here, and that's multiplying. And then now we need to simplify. You'll see what happens. So this is really a um, conjugate here, x prime. This is our a plus b the a plus b times a minus b format, right? So really we're looking at a squared minus b squared um, for the numerator. So we have x prime squared and then minus y prime squared. And then we multiply the denominator. Root 2 times root 2 is just going to be a root 2 squared. And then we still have our minus 1 equals 0. So then let's uh, rewrite this. This is going to be x prime squared minus y prime squared. And then it's all over just 2 here. And then let's move the negative 1 to the other side so that it equals 1. So now we're looking at our hyperbola with um, center at 0, 0. Now this is with the rotated axes, k okay, here. Then we know that a is square root of 2, b is also square root of 2. Now x is first, so then it's along the x-axis. So square root of 2 um, is a little over 1. So 1 is probably around here, 2 is here. So maybe it's right about here. And then also uh, down here on the other side, those are our vertices. And then so here approximately is where high our, where our hyperbola is. So in that x prime, y prime system, our vertices on the a rotated axes is at plus or minus square root of 2, 0, right? It's so along the x axis, uh, root 2, and then it didn't go up any. So it's kind of different to look at, um, but this is now our x axis and this is now our y axis, so it's rotated along there. So I want you to go ahead and try this example on your own. Rotate the axis to eliminate the xy term in the equation xy plus 6 equals 0. Then write the equation in standard form and then sketch its graph. All right. So hopefully you tried it out just to get a little bit of practice because this is really new. Um, you found that the same, it's the same theta of pi over 4. You plug it in, you get the same x and y term. Then when you plug it all in, then you find you subtract 6, 
and then you divide it by negative six, and so you get a, you flip the signs, right? You flip the positions of everything because now this is positive, this is negative, so now it's along the y-axis here. So our vertices are now at zero plus or minus square root of 12, um, and so I hope this helps you out.